Okay, AMD's launched Epic, but for AM5. Epic CPUs for AM5? Yeah, so that's where the 7950X went, apparently, because there was a long time when the 7950X was basically unobtainium, but you could get a really good deal on 7950X 3D. What was going on? Well, they were being relabeled to be sold as Epic. It turns out that, you know, 8, 12, 16 cores in this tiny little form factor, for a lot of people, this is a really reasonable server. It does a lot of cool stuff. And if you've been a follower of this channel for a long time, you know that, hey, we've been recommending like for a home server or a small business server i just need a file server to run a couple of things am4 was a great choice with 12 or 16 cores especially and now am5 really basically no different if you also follow this channel for a long time you know that error correcting memory with ddr5 was off to a bit of a rough start in 2023 but in 2024 i'm here to tell you the situation is very much improved probably has something to do with the fact that you can get epic am5 cpus but we're, we're getting ready to go into ryzen 9000 desktop cpus as well and i don't know if anything is changing there there's some interesting stuff going on in the agiza updates agiza is like the low level firmware from amd and uh while a lot of the rough edges that I reported on with ECC support for AM5 in the beginning were largely fixed by Giza 1.0.0.5C and it took, it was really annoying, really annoying. And then that still didn't fix some of it. One of these boards actually just got an update in November of uh, 2023 that made it usable for error correcting, but uh, let's this is going to be everything you need to know as quick as I possibly can, hopefully, for error correction on not a server board with AM5 in 2024. It's different and interesting. AM4, DDR4. Begin our story with DDR5, we're gonna talk a little bit about DDR4. This is the same motherboard that I helped Steve with uh, Gamers Nexus at the X470 D4U. I don't remember if it was the, the X470 or the X570 version, but ASRock made a version of this, and I think that probably AMD was a little bit surprised that this was as popular as it was in the data center. And the PCIe layout here is super weird. Like, I would have customized this PCIe layout to be something completely different, but 16 cores, um, there's a 5950X in here. That's what the system has been rocking. Reasonably okay error correction memory support. Now, server memory truly is registered error correcting memory. And that is still true with the DDR5 platform, but this is unregistered e ECC. And this motherboard had a lot of quirks that I reported on, some of which remain unfixed. One of those errors is that when there is a memory error, the onboard management console on this does not log the memory error. The Linux kernel does log the memory error and you can write a script such as the one on the level one forums that'll take the error from the kernel and immediately manually inject it into the out of band management log on our A-Speed 2600. Normally the system does that. There's no operating system intervention to do that. Uh, AMD for their part have actually done a lot of really amazing original engineering on the Epic side. So as I've done experiments with Epic CPUs and getting up to speed with how things work under, Ep uh, under the hood with Epic, the um, error injection and reporting facilities on the AMD Epic side of things are second to none. In fact, I went to AMD's campus to learn more about how they were doing what they were doing with error detection and correction. And they were actually able to show me how those facilities can be modified to uh, change the errors that are injected and make them more user and administrator friendly. So you can actually have an error that's, okay, there's a problem with chip number two in DDR DIM slot A2 on motherboard X in slot Y of rack Z, which is a lot of fun. And on the AM5 side, things felt a little bit more rushed. When we talk about DDR5, a single error correction DDR5 DIMM, or an error correcting DDR5 DIMM, this is, you know, this is also unregistered, um, is uh, maybe a little half-baked. This is not an AMD thing, this is a DDR5 thing. DDR5 was brought up in server contexts first, and that, strictly speaking, means registered error correcting DDR5 memory. That is what it is designed to operate at. Desktop memory comes almost as an afterthought. Like the engineers are thinking about it, but it's kind of passed down 
wants the server stuff. This is an unregistered error correcting DDR5 DIMM. There's one, two, three, four, five chips on each side. DDR5 moved to be two 16-bit channels on a single DIMM instead of a single 32-bit channel. That created some problems. Uh, one of the problems is that with registered error correcting memory, you now ideally in ideal implementation have two error correction chips. Uh, the hyperscalers did not like that. And so uh, the standard was modified very shortly thereafter to be able to support one chip extra uh, to do the error correction. Oh, and I almost forgot something critically important. I get these crucial DIMMs. These are not ECC DIMMs. Uh, these are listed on Newegg as supporting ECC. However, these are not ECC DIMMs. And it is not untrue that there is some error correction that happens. All DDR5 has what is called on-die ECC, which means that the memory chips themselves have a limited ability to correct memory in flight or to verify that the information was transferred correctly from the memory controller on the CPU to the DIMM and from the DIMM to the memory controller on the CPU. So to an extent, all DDR5 memory has some level of error correction. But this has extra chips for error correction, which is most analogous to what your expectation was if you were familiar with this technology from DDR4 unregistered error correcting memory. You still have the extra chips, but it's physically different. It's physically notch different, un unlike DDR4. You're not going to be able to use registered error correcting memory in any of these. You're going to need a Threadripper system. And there are a lot of ar arguments to be made. If you want something that is truly professional class, you're better off with that 24 core and above Threadripper, or Threadripper Pro system, TRX50 or WRX90. But that is insanely massive way overkill for just a home system. The other wrinkle is that when you get a server board like this one, this is the ASRock B650D4U2L2T, which by the way, the very first version of the BIOS in this did not, it would post with error correction, but the error correction did not actually do much of anything. Like it wouldn't, I'm not sure that it was operating, but the, the error correction messages were not reported to the kernel, no matter what BIOS option that you, you set. That was fixed eventually. But this one also still suffers from the, hey, error correction events don't get logged to the IPMI. But otherwise it does work and it is a reasonably satisfying experience. This motherboard is like four or $500. The Tai Chi Lite, by con this is like a 200-ish dollar motherboard. And this is a really high-end motherboard, relatively speaking. Dual eight, eight lane Gen 5. You got a lot of M.2 connectivity, full-size ATX motherboard. This is a better board in every way. Layers, noise immunity, the speed of memory can run at, et cetera, et cetera. Except that one has built-in 10 gig. Okay, that's pretty cool. That is worth maybe paying a premium, but like five, six hundred dollars, like more than double the price. And the PCIe slot layout on the B650 is not fabulous. Whereas I've got two real usable slots, plus onboard two and a half gig, plus a crap load of of USB plus, you know, two M.2 plus the blazing M.2, the Gen 5 M.2. It's a pretty nice little system. This does work with both 72 and 80 bit error correcting systems. Oh, and in the specific case of the B650 D4U, it was very, very frustrating because like this is 1.0.0.7C, which theoretically should have supported, and this is from like November of 2023. And this on desktop boards does actually support ECC. But because of BIOS bugs or something like that, the EDAC in Linux reports no DIM options. Like you can run DMI decode and it says it's 72 bits wide, but you will never get an error corrected event reported from the system. A lot of the time, it seems like in those cases, those motherboards will boot with error correcting memory, but not actually use the error correction function, which is wild. Or maybe it is silently working, but I like having the messages reported to the kernel, and this is, is not working on this version of the BIOS. Fortunately, because of the AMD EPIC support, we're at 1.1 point something on the Agiza platform thing, which has a much higher likelihood of working for error correction and also aligning with the patch set for the kernel. Basically across the board, the Tai Chi is was one of the first to get basically everything corrected and have everything be pretty stable. ASRock in general has great support for error correction and posting with error correction and everything else. By contrast, 
the B650i Aorus Ultra, in the beginning this motherboard would post with error correcting memory, and then there were a couple of BIOS updates where it would no longer post with error correcting memory, which is a very frustrating and harrowing experience. And now I think it will post, but I'm not confident that the error correction is actually being used because I've never observed this board actually reporting a, uh, an error corrected event, even despite injecting some pretty gnarly errors. The ASRock Phantom Gaming B650E PGITX Wi-Fi. This has two onboard SATA, which is not fabulous, EDP, you got M.2 on the bottom and the top. This works with 80-bit. 72-bit was a little sketchy on this motherboard at first, but as of the January 24, like late 23, early 24 BIOS update, this is good to go. I've also got the Asus family of motherboards. Now, the ROG Crosshair X670E Hero. Generally speaking, the Asus boards have gotten a lot better in the last six to eight months. I would recommend the X670E Hero as well as the Pro Art. Actually, the Pro Art motherboard is just better, both the B650 and the X670. The X670 is dramatically better because it has built in 10 gigabit ethernet, but generally those two boards from Asus are really good. The X670E Steel Legend and the Pro RS. Both of these are good budget alternatives that have correctly working error correcting memory as of this video, finally. The PCIe layout on these boards, I, in my opinion, is suboptimal. And we've got, you know, a one gig and a two and a half gig LAN on this Realtek. The X670E Steel Legend is nice because it is dual LAN on board. You can use both of those. And then you can throw in, you know, a NIC or two, but it would be nice if it had an X4 slot or something like that. Now, if you can hold out just a little longer, the new chipsets are coming for the new desktop processors. And at Computex, the PCIe layouts for those boards looked a lot better. And so I want to repeat this testing or probably refer back to this video for everything else that's not those to say, hey, yes, we got properly working error correcting memory, unregistered uh, ECC DIMMs, and everything is magical and you should use those boards for better PCIe layout. But Hey, in terms of brands of unregistered error correcting memory, it's still kind of hard. You've got SK Hynix, Micron, and Samsung. And the Samsung kits are the ones that I have that are 72 bits wide. And I think the Micron ones are the ones that I have that are 80 bits wide. Generally, the 80 bits wide DIMMs seem like they work a little bit better, but that is anecdotal evidence. Strictly speaking, 72 and 80 bits wide should both work equally well. Some other notes for you on this. One, try to go with two DIMMs, not four. DDR5, two DIMMs per channel is way sketchier than DDR4. If you're all about reliability and longevity and everything else, you should go for just two DIMMs per channel. You should just pretend the other two DIMM slots aren't even there. Don't use them, just forget about it. it, it, it. Two DIMMs per channel electrically is a lot more challenging, especially at the higher data rates. You're just inviting more uh, noise and instability over that five year term. It's better to just get your 24 or 48 gigabyte DIMMs up front and just run with those. Yes, you can get 64 gig DIMMs, so you can run 128 gigs on the platform. Theoretically, with two DIMMs per channel, you could go full bore 256 gigabytes, but again, if you're about ECC and reliability, one DIMM per channel on the AM5 platform. I don't see that changing even with the new generation of motherboards and everything else. And in fact, the DDR5 memory standard itself is changing to be like LPCAM2, which is physically four channels, two DIMMs, on one carrier card. And that'll run insanely way faster than you will ever get out of a DIMM. And that'll be faster and more stable and more awesome. But that in an ECC variety, pfft, that was not even a glint in anybody's eyes at Computex. So, a little worrying. Also, small form factor machines. Air correcting SODIMs, DDR5, are also a thing. Now, if you wanna test this or just take it a spin for yourself, the easiest way is definitely a Linux Live USB. Ubuntu, Ubuntu 24.04. You can run a command prompt and sudo apt install edac-utils, and that'll give you some debugging info about edac. And you can also run this command to grep for anything about edac and the kernel messages. Now, I think the Agiza is still really buggy, or maybe the kernel enablement is buggy. One of the two is buggy, because if you are running with a single DIMM, for example, and you don't have the single DIMM in the correct DIMM slot, the EDAC util will just error out. The other thing is APUs. So you can get AM5 APUs like the 8700G. The 8700G is not su supposed to support 
error, error correction, like ECC, unless it's the Pro version. But on the ASRock boards, it seems like EDAC is enabled, but I never actually saw any errors reported from the 8700G. So I don't know that I would trust that unless you explicitly get a Pro series CPU. But that was kind of wild that that's a thing. I think that, again, sometimes it's just down to a BIOS bug or enablement or there's some software thing, there's two things pointing at each other. Because it should not be the case that if you have your DIMM in a configuration that the system will post, but you don't get certain features or things run weird. So like if you run one DIMM in the farthest slot, the system will post, but then Linux doesn't report anything is working correctly with your memory. Like you can run DMI decode. DMI decode is able to look at the memory and say, well, this is error correcting memory, but the kernel doesn't report that EDAC is working correctly. And in fact, it'll say zero DIMMs on EDAC, which is a really interesting, wild thing that is a thing. Probably a bug. So there we are. That is the full state, the full roundup of DDR5 error correction in 2024. The state of things on the platform overall has improved dramatically and you can get actually epic branded CPUs to be able to run that. I don't have any here in the lab, but if you follow the channel for a long time, you know that basically on day one, I was running the 7900X and then later the 7900 No X in this. In fact, I did a video on the 7900 No X is basically the ideal home server CPU, low power, 12 cores, a ridiculous amount of horsepower in those 12 cores, DDR5, now you've got a good supported DDR5 you know, 10, 10 chips on a DIMM. And for me, I think the price premium is worth it on the ASRock B650 rack motherboard. But if you want to cheap out and get something okay, the Tai Chi Light is a good choice. The Pro Art, eh, you spend so much on the Pro Art, you're getting back into, well, maybe I should just get the, uh, maybe I should just get the actual server grade board that has out of band management. That's really what you're paying for is out of band management. And in the, the case of this board, onboard 10 gig but onboard 10 gig and out of band management are not worth to some people the plus 125 to $150 each premiums. Like, do you really need out of band management? Can you just manage it through a serial console and like turn it on and off through a Pi KVM? I mean, $100 for a Pi KVM versus, uh, there is an argument to be made there. Okay, maybe, possibly. Steel Legend Pro RS. Pro RS could be a good choice, depending on what you want your slot and LAN configuration to be. And if you're looking for a deal, those B650 and the older X670 motherboards for AM5 getting ready to go on sale because of the new desktop chips. With a BIOS update, combine those with the Epic CPUs. Could be pretty epic. Like I say, I haven't tested Epic CPUs on any of these. Did most of my testing with a pair of 7900 No X CPUs and 7950X CPUs. 7950X CPUs were surprisingly hard to get. Now I know why, because AMD launched to Epic in AM5, which actually does make a lot of sense. I mean, the 5950X in this platform, I have servers that have been on the internet since the 5950X was available at retail, running continuously, logging ECC errors on this board, doing lots of fun, low level, very pedestrian computer janitory type tasks. And I have been thrilled with this as a low cost platform. And AM5 is even more powerful. So I'm really glad that the ECC issues mostly are dramatically way better than they were a year ago. And I'm mostly happy with the testing that I did. It's getting better. I, I don't know that you could trust just any random board. And there are some people that have had experiences with other ECC stuff in the level one forums. So be sure to check that out. Look for threads for people that have posted their builds or configurations or confirmed uh, DMI decode dumps from Linux to make sure. You can also check on Windows if you're into checking if error correcting is working on Windows. There's this whole conversation we can have about platform first error handling versus operating system first error handling. But this video is already running a little long. I'm one of this level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums.